Hey, I'm Jocelyn, and this is Eliz from Means to Travel, and we both love eating, and we both love traveling, so we're gonna make a video today on kind of just being mindful about food while you're traveling. So we'll start with that. Yeah. Cheers. Mm, cheers. This is delicious. <laughs> right? It's yeah. good. When I talk about being mindful and um, eating, one thing that always comes to mind for me is when I'm on a plane and peanuts. They used to always hand out peanuts and they're doing less of that because people are so allergic. If you're gonna take snacks on a plane, that's fine, but let's like, you know, just be aware before you pop open those peanuts. Maybe ask the person sitting next to you or in front and behind you whether or not they're allergic because sometimes that allergy particularly is so, it's even airborne for some people and it's literally life and death. So. That is that is something to be mindful of. What what else? Do you have any other things about being mindful about um, food on planes? Yeah, I would say also if you're you know maybe running late and you need to grab your lunch or something right before you get on a plane, one thing to certainly make sure you're conscious of is what you order and how it smells because when you're <laughs> on an airplane, kind of scientifically, your your senses get heightened um, up at higher elevations and. That goes for anything from food to like nail polishes, etc. But especially with food, maybe you don't want to order something with tuna salad. Maybe you don't want to order something with onions. Just those strong smelling foods yeah. that you would bring onto the plane to consume on there. Of course, you can always eat it in the terminal and then have some mints or something and then you're good to go. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to stink up everything around us when we're in a flying metal tube, right? right? Yeah, I have to totally agree with that. And that's just more being mindful of your fellow passengers too because maybe they also forgot their lunch and had they're eaten hungry. and they hungry. <laughs> maybe they're going to think it smells good. I don't know. But still, just making sure you're mindful of anything that has the stronger scent. I totally agree with that. I actually was on a flight one time and a woman was painting her nails. That was awful. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad. You really just don't do that. <laughs> Something that I really loved, um, we lived in China for a summer and I know you have been to China. One yeah. of the things I really enjoyed was that many of the trains that we got on had hot water taps. So people would bring their cup of ramen and they would make their ramen on the thing. So but cool. it's right? It's so great. But it's not just China. You'll find tea kettles and water boilers all over the world, really. You can find them in most hotel rooms now. So you can always bring like some ramen and things like that just yeah. to ease the budget a little bit. I also really like to bring a instant oatmeal with me whenever I travel anywhere in the world because oftentimes even if it's just a coffee maker you can kind of turn it into a hot water heater or yeah. there might be an electric kettle in the room and if your hotel doesn't offer that free continental breakfast it's an easy breakfast to have just it's make it free. go it, <laughs> yeah I mean it's it's a few cents yeah, <laughs> you know I like it. it's yeah a good one and my kids love instant oatmeal yeah great awesome yeah. and then I mean you can also bring like spices or something and just Spice it up with some cinnamon or something. Okay. And then on top of bringing food that you can access and make with the hot water that's available to you, there's also a few things that you want to keep in mind when it comes to how other cultures like the temperatures of their food. So like we were saying, when <laughs> yeah. we were in Asia, we noticed that a lot of Asian cultures like to serve things a lot hotter, whether that's tea. Boiling. Yeah. Bo <laughs> like when I say a lot hotter, it's just scalds your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I can't handle My mother-in-law would love that, but I'm yeah. like, it, the soup, the tea, all of it. We talked about soup dumplings. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love soup dumplings. Make so sure you good. try the dim sum when you go to China or anywhere else that maybe has that on a menu. But you have to kind of, when you're there, bite into the dumpling itself and slowly slurp out the soup. So that way- Five minutes later yeah. after it's cool. <laughs> So that way your mouth doesn't get like boiling hot. <laughs> I think <laughs> don't I, don't put the dumplings straight in. <laughs> definitely not. It's funny that that's a cultural thing that we eat things cooler, and it's kind of like there's very rarely a lot of ice in drinks in Europe. Yes, it's that's the opposite side of it, and right? It could be ninety five degrees Fahrenheit outside, and you are really wanting some sort of ice, <laughs> at least two cubes or something in your drink. And yeah. you might get none. Yeah. But, but <laughs> counteractively, Europeans should be very aware that we like a lot of ice in our glasses. Yeah. And I know I have friends who sit there and just spoon it right out when mm -hmm. they get there when they get a soda or something here in the States. 
And ice water <clears throat> will actually land on your table as soon as you get to a restaurant oftentimes in yeah. the U.S., whereas you might have to order it when you are traveling in Europe or traveling somewhere else. Yeah, definitely. One of my absolute favorite things to do when I'm traveling um, and I'm cooking or whatever, I just, I love to go to local markets. I think it's such a great cultural experience and I always find something new. I, you know, I will never forget the first time I was in Brazil and I was in a market and I saw a whole jackfruit. I knew about jackfruit, but I'd never seen it live in person like, the, like big, that. the big thing all put together <laughs> yeah it's it's like a massive watermelon with spikes almost and it kind of actually looks like a pod that an alien would be born from i mean it it's, does. it's wild right <laughs> so i asked and i started talking to them I'm like well so what is this and they're like jackfruit it's kind of stinky and we use it like meat it's fruit they use like meat and actually it's really great so if you're vegetarian or vegan you might just have found like your new meat substitute it's a really cool thing right i have tried it before and it can be pretty good pork pulled pork substitute if you put a lot of barbecue sauce on it and then make it into a sandwich it's all about the sauce isn't it oh heck yeah <laughs> <laughs> but on top of if you kind of see something that you don't recognize, you might be served something at a restaurant, for example, that you are really excited to try or just it sounded really good, but you don't know how to eat it. It happens. This has happened to me. <laughs> I mean, even within the U.S., I, I'm from the Midwest. I went to Boston. I could not wait to try lobster and I had never had it like still in the shell and I <laughs> needed to ask the waiter how do you declaw, how do you take the shell off the lobster mm -hmm. so that way I could get to the meat inside. So Without ruining the inside because then it's precious meat. Right. <laughs> and what's the best strategy too so you don't get a complete mess on your table? <laughs> that's, a really, that's a really good yeah. one. Um, this also happened to me and my husband went to um, the UK last fall and we ordered the local seafood sampler platter and it arrived and it was all these things that we didn't really recognize. There was langoustines, there was smelt that still had the heads and the eyes and everything and we had to ask the, the waitress and she was so sweet about it to kind of explain how to eat it so definitely don't be afraid to ask for a little bit of help so that way you have that full experience and you can totally ask the people sitting at the table next to you too um, I have certainly done that and we've learned some really interesting food cultures like in Greece they they give you the eyeball of the fish and that and the meat behind the eyeball are reserved for the person of honor so the first time I went to Greece my great great aunt is like forking the eyeball and handing it to me. And I'm like, oh, and I feel so honored. And go, oh, thank you so much. It was, it was ridiculous, but I did eat it, and yeah. my kids think it's great, and they eat fish eyeballs now. Totally, even totally like ask. taking duck in China or something. There's a certain ritual Absolutely. that it just makes the whole experience really worthwhile and like just culturally rich to to do it the way that that they teach you so so those are some of our top tips for you know being mindful about what you're doing when you're traveling and how you're eating things and um getting to experience new stuff right absolutely so you know i have a bunch of food videos on simply jocelyn but liz has a whole bunch of great videos at means to travel so why don't you tell us where you can be found on all the platforms. Absolutely. So I'm at Means to Travel on YouTube as well as all of the social media channels. So go find me there and you can see several vlogs of me and my husband kind of trying to figure our way through different food experiences there too. Awesome. So um, she's great. So is her husband. We just have a really good time, all of us together. And I um, hope you enjoyed this video. See y'all. Bye. Bloopers. I'm going to sneeze in a second. Okay. <laughs> if you say the word cow, sometimes that helps. Cow? I it usually just look at the sun. Cow, cow. Cow. <laughs> cow. I'm not going to sneeze now. It worked. I think we're good. Bloopers. <laughs> ah, my belt just fell off. <laughs> well, I guess we fit her too much. Okay. <laughs> Bloopers. This is a great video. Yes. Please subscribe. <laughs>